What's good everybody, it's Batman, and today we're doing another reaction video. It's your boy TG. You guys know the vibes. Come on, let's get it. Like, let's be real, okay? At the end of the day, I'm gonna say, bro, this man's about to hit that 20 sub. What are we doing? Let's sub, let's give him all the love, let's get him there. He needs to be further beyond, I'm being honest with you, you guys. Hey, okay, he's nice. I'm not really that nice, okay? Not, not always, all right? What are we doing, okay? He should already be at like 100K, okay? Like, you, you stop being stupid. Okay, you know, you're over here with your popcorn, eating, and enjoying all his videos and all his hard work, yet you ain't subbing to the guy. What we doing, you know? I guarantee if we went in the statistics, okay, it would show that none of you are sub, but you're watching his shit, okay? You know, come on, you know? Even the GOAT swag, okay, acknowledged his his greatness and good. He promoted him to Okage, bro. What more do you need, all right, you know? Anyways, um... But we're going to get into it. Uh, what's going on? If you guys don't know who he is, make sure to check him out. If you fuck with his content, obviously, I'm just giving you guys shit. Um, and what we're checking out today is uh, what if Ichikage fought Itachi in the Sasuke's position. It's a goaded thumbnail, by the way. Extremely goaded. I'm really, really excited. I'm going to be honest with you. One of the reasons why I really enjoy watching TG's videos is because we think very, very similar when it comes to scaling. Or we're also very transparent and have a tons of equity in lines of scaling where we're able to play devil's advocate or at least be willing to understand multiple perspectives in scaling and not pull the oh if you don't like my scaling then if it's not my way it's the fucking highway type vibes right that's why i enjoy watching tg so much he's just such a great humble guy very intelligent underrated content creator and most importantly that means i don't have to pause a lot <laughs> that means i'm not trying to debunk shit all the time right you know and you name it etc yada yada you know um, obviously if there's some good, you know, relevant stuff, I'll pause it because it, this is a reaction, right? You know, I'm not, we're not going to pull a sniper wolf, but, um, what's it called? You know, but anyways, you know, so we're going to get into it. We'll have some pauses here and there to some either substantiate his points or just, you know, maybe something I thought of extra, whatever, or maybe there's, there, there's something I might even disagree with, you know, but it's not the end of the world, right? So, uh, let's get it. I'm excited. Atachi is one of my favorites in Naruto as well. So let's do it. I'm over here clicking like a bro. Somebody Genju to my bitch ass. What am I doing? I already had the video up. What What's going on, guys? TG or Thunder got here today. Talking right, let's about get it. Itachi Big Meat Schlangen Uchiha. <laughs> you think that's his me? It gets mistaken with the crow. <laughs> oh, no way. He just did the Fortnite bit. Whoever edited that, bro, that's cold, bro. <laughs> no shot. He did that. He's just got it. But anyway, anyway, today's video is pretty uh, self explanatory, but a very that's interesting that's video. Been... I forgot to ask TG. I forgot to ask him. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tag him in the title of the video. I normally do or put his or put his YouTube name in the description uh, in the YouTube just this way you guys can check out his shit. But I'm gonna tag him whether it's in the title description and ask him a question. Why is your thing a, a frog and looks like Thor? Because fun fact in Marvel, Thor becomes a frog. If you guys didn't know that, it was like I think it was in a comic with like Spider Man where Loki turns him into a frog and then turns Spider Man into a pig. And I'm like, is that the reason why? Or is that just something you thought of? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? And he is called TG, Thunder God. So I guess it makes sense, right? Thor, Thunder God, you know? But why is it a frog? <laughs> Does he love frogs? I don't know. Is he a uh, dry as sun? I don't know. But hey, we'll find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So yeah, at the end of the day, you know, we'll see. But I'm going to ask him, okay? I will fucking ask him. And I will get an answer for you guys on the next reaction. Okay? I promise. I promise. But if I talk to him in Discord, or if I talk to him and I'm fucking in the comments on YouTube, whatever the case may be, you will know. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. We wasted enough time. Video, since there's a lot of very interesting matchups, essentially going to be throwing each of the Hokage in Sasuke's position against Itachi and the Chia hideout and seeing what they could really do against an Itachi who has intent to kill. So enough about the Prattle. Let's actually get into this discussion. Now, starting off, I do want to kind of talk about Itachi for a second. Now, I'm going to do my best to kind of introduce some new ideas here because I think a lot of people know a lot about Itachi and, you know, I've heard a lot of the same arguments. So, for example, a lot of people have seen the statement where he stated to be equal to EMS Sasuke. Some people also have that interpretation off of Itachi's performance in relativity to Sasuke in that encounter. That's all fine. They're very comparable in that encounter. And anything before that, you know, version of Sasuke is just objectively weaker than Itachi. Itachi's also just 
above the Sani tier of fighter. Whether you look at any of his interactions with the Rochimaru, now I'm gonna save the Hydro yeah. form. Once again, TG's always been in facts, making this really short and simple. Uh, absolutely. Objectively, it's it's clear that Itachi is still above. We see that when he's like smacking away Susano when it when Itachi is pissed and like saying, "Hey, like stop," you know. We see that with him backpacking the whole fight with Kabuto. Um, but if you want to go the whole other route and yada yada and be like, oh, blatant relativity and all that other stuff, that's perfectly fine, like TG said as well. Um, but objectively, he is above. Subjectively, you could definitely argue other things. For a minute, but just his base, Sharingan, pretty much negging Orochimaru and forcing him to leave the Akatsuki. Or Orochimaru just admitting that Itachi was just always beyond him in strength. While Orochimaru did think he had a chance with Edo Tensei against the likes of Hiruzen, you know, and... I don't need to go into like the Sani and Hiruzen's lore and relativity of the five Kage because a lot of people have heard these arguments before. So I won't waste Facts. anybody's time with discussing them. And aside from a lot of Itachi. Bro, this editing goes hard. Oh my God. TG, how's that wallet, bro? Are you good? <laughs> no, nah, I know you're good. But God damn. Editing go cray cray. Arsenal, Shit. you know, his nature releases water, wind, and fire along with having access to yin and yang release. The main thing I actually want to cover is the difference between Itachi and Edo Itachi. Now, because a lot of people, in my opinion, just jump on this train of just equating Edo Itachi to a live Itachi and what they can do. And I can see a case for that, maybe at the start of the fight, but it just doesn't work. Now, there's a couple things we know. He has sight deterioration. We see this when Itachi is looking at Sasuke and we're given his vision from his perspective. Sasuke's all blurry. It's very similar to, you know, when we see Sasuke's POV against Kakashi. Along with yep. this, there's stamina issues, quote unquote, that everybody brings up. Yep. Now, derived off of Itachi having a 2.5 of his stamina in the data books, which, which does not mean he has low stamina. I think people unbelievably exaggerate Itachi's stamina issues. The reason I say this too, and I'm going to bounce back to this in a second, is that we can actually see off of the 30% clone uh, when I, Pain activated the art of impersonation, allocating 30% of Itachi. Once again, TG's just spitting facts the whole time. I, I just give one example. While sick on his deathbed with a Chia AIDS and on top of it, like fucking blind as well. Okay, and fatigue, you know, you name it. The man is spamming a Amaterasu, use Tsukiyomi on Sasuke, spamming Genjutsu, spamming Ninjutsu, going in Taijutsu, spamming Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu, then using Susana with no MS or nothing, completely blind, using a full power Susano. All this shit, bro, like, he's low key underrated when it comes to stamina and chakra. Is he a beast and built like people like Naruto, Hashiram, Madara, yada, yada? And obviously, no. He, he is similar to Kakashi. You know, he has certain levels of chakra and stamina, but his chakra control is what makes him so powerful. And two, low key, he does have pretty decent stamina and chakra. Like, it, it's people like to really stretch that shit. So, absolutely agree. I can go on and on and on and substantiate that further, but you know, I don't have to. Chakra into that San Shinobi that worked under Sasori. Pretty much when he's fighting Kakashi and Ko, he's actually able to, at least in the manga continuity, use one clone, two Genjutsus, and one Fireball. And when you add in the anime, he actually uses one clone, two Genjutsu, two Fireballs, and a Phoenix Flower Jutsu. So the anime even paints him as more impressive using all this, all these various techniques, which yep. is 30% of his chakra. What nobody brings up, though, in regards to this 30% clone is that it doesn't get completely destroyed by Naruto's Odama Rasengan, touted to have the equivalent impact strength to a small meteorite. Right? We actually see when he's hit, Itachi smiling while getting pummeled with the technique, which more so displays that the only reason that the San Shinobi who was used as a base didn't get completely annihilated was due to Itachi's chakra pumping through his veins. This is also more interesting considering that the clone is only stated to die when the caster runs out of chakra, which only happens when Itachi and Kisame's host bodies are hit with these large scale techniques. Yeah. And we do know that chakra is what amps your body and raises its durability. So you can actually throw in the possibility yep. that Itachi and Kisame's doubles were able to not have their bodies completely decimated due to the actual Akatsuki members still controlling them at the point of impact, which more so introduces the idea that Itachi could have potentially used more jutsu with that 30% clone. This might also teeter into Itachi and Kisame possibly having some higher durability than what may have been previously established. I just think it's an interesting little note that nobody brings up. You might ask, why would I even consider bringing that up? Well, the point I want to get across is that Itachi's illness slash stamina issues 
only really matter in these types of conversations when you're discussing him using MS techniques yeah. or fighting opponents that require him to spam it. Because when he's fighting Sasuke in his fight, he's pretty much getting hit with two nerfs at the same time or two backlashes. He's getting the general MS like, drawback from just using the techniques. Yep. And then his illness also comes into play. What's interesting too is that, and this isn't like absolute, but when he's like pretty much suffering drawbacks throughout the fight, he makes like a hack noise in the manga, like the sound effect is like a hacking. It's like, ah. Bruh. But the problem is that Sasuke also does make this sound effect when he's fighting the Rakage. And even though he doesn't make it when he's fighting Donzo and Mei, it just pretty much makes it that it's very difficult to judge when he's getting hit by either the illness or the MS drawback, or if he's just getting hit by both continuously. All we know though is that his illness objectively took effect when he's at the later stage of the fight using the Susano when he grabs his chest. So. It, whatever i'm not trying to scale coughs i don't know if that's how far <laughs> we've gotten or how about bottom of the barrel we're at but the point of this whole mini discussion is that the illness argument only really matters when itachi's pushed to his brink yeah just... it, it, bro, like tg he's absolutely correct it's just like old man harrison like a lot of people sleep on him they're like oh yeah it's stamina charter stuff blah, blah 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 yeah technically but at the end of the day if you really analyze him as a whole the man was able to have a fight with a rochimau with a world Chimaru for hours, okay? And even like the Ambu people, they're like like fucking very powerful and intelligent. They're like, wow, it is like almost unheard of for any shinobi to be fighting for this long for hours and yada yada. And like and obviously unless you're built like Naruto and Sasuke or Hashirama and Madara, then you could fucking fight for a full fucking day. You know, like or even the third right Kage who's able to fight for many days straight, you know, and whatnot against thousands of shinobi. So do, being able to replicate feats like that is extremely impressive and no fucking joke, you know? So, um, just, just putting that out there. But he's spitting facts. So he's basically repping Itachi, like, don't sleep on him while he, even though he is sick and whatever, yada, yada. He's still impressive in a certain regard. And not only that, to even further add that, Obito also still thinks he's a threat. Literally Obito himself. So, just saying continuously spamming ms techniques same thing with this stamina as that's what eats up most of his chakra anyway same thing at part one he needs to rest after using a couple of ms techniques and even in the fight with sasuke i believe six is the one who introduced this idea but he uses uh, he actually has a sparring match with kisame due to the canon generations yep. cutscene. he has a clone that went to go fight sasuke he gives kodo to naruto so he actually does do a bit before he fights sasuke and then even in that fight even before he's using his ms techniques he uses like one to two genjutsu he that is true though he has a full-on fight against kasame he does a shadow clone against naruto and then he does a shadow clone against uh, sasuke before he even does the full fight <laughs> now i knew all the other stuff he said but i totally forgot about the kasame shit that's hilarious like come on guys <laughs> that this pates into crows he uses sukiyomi to amaterasu and then initiates the susano twice along with having a fireball match with sasuke on top of the uchiha hideout so it's very clear that you know if you're kind of implying that sasuke itachi's willing to go to the death which i'm gonna be for this encounter yeah he, you know obviously his drawbacks are gonna be apparent in these matchups because it's gonna provide openings and another way to look at it is that itachi quite literally chakra fatigued heavy sasuke sasuke in general is a character known for his endurance in these types of fights at Kanko the distance True. especially with the power of the white snake so even considering that it's just very impressive when you consider it in re you know relative to other characters so while i don't think he's like on the level of pain stamina wise because no. pain's like in a whole nother tier yeah i do think that people generally overestimate the itachi stamina thing that's all we even see that itachi may possess some minor sensory capabilities as even while he's quite literally blind his eyes are grayed out He's actually able to feel Orochimaru's chakra and discern exactly what technique he's using. Yeah. Just judging off the feeling alone. That is true. Really impressive. I totally There's forgot about that. Itachi's character, but I'm going to save the rest of it for when it becomes more relevant in these discussions and stuff like that. Like his Susano, how that maybe stacks up, what's you know, all, that, all that good stuff. So let's actually get into this discussion. And if you enjoyed what you heard, maybe like some of the stuff, consider subscribing or liking, whatever. You do what you want, man. Let's start <laughs> off with Tsunade. Now, Tsunade is rather interesting because she actually does have some good resistance to Genjutsu via her chakra control. Her and Sakura are very similar in this type, with Sakura being a Genjutsu type. She would obviously notice that her chakra is being influenced or controlled by Itachi and maybe disrupted. If you want to look at it another way, you could maybe say that once she releases the Byakugosu, 
seal and she's supplied by the seal's internal chakra. That would also interrupt the genjutsu in a similar capacity to when somebody else would just give you chakra to interrupt the genjutsu and disrupt That's it. That's fair, and yeah. we do know this from the Byakugo seal. It actually is an amp on Tsunade as well. It's just stated to power her up even more. So she should be fine when the question of basic genjutsu comes about. Unless you go off the Orochimaru example. But even then, like that, that, that it's so... It's so crazy that Orochimaru really let himself, like, get... I don't know what he was thinking or if he just wasn't prepared for Itachi's Genjutsu Mastery to be that strong. But it just goes to display that Genjutsu is really potent and there's just some fighters who can't overcome it. And I will say, too, to kind of keep on this discussion, basic Genjutsu shouldn't be enough to put her down. I will say, though, you know, Tsunade, from a lore perspective, shouldn't be on Itachi's level just with everything in Itachi being yeah. above the Sanin. Especially him being likes above the likes of full power Orochimaru, who quite literally just fought Hiruzen. Hiruzen, who also should be above any of the Sanin individually. You can see this in his fight as the minute he comes, overcomes any reservations about killing Orochimaru, he instantly disarms him, blitzes him, grabs him, and initiates the Reaper Dead Seal. And even though that fight does last an hour, and it's a tug of war where Hiruzen's being impaled, and Orochimaru still isn't able to just overpower him. So yeah. it should be very clear that on top of the emotional stuff, Hiruzen just is on Orochimaru's level, or implied to be just above it. So not a speed Facts. also shouldn't be Let him know. anything Itachi hasn't dealt with. I couldn't see a situation to where she actually connects a landing blow to him, especially since the way he fights, he uses crow clones, exploding clones yeah. as diversion. Yeah, I'll be honest, I think Itachi just straight up blitzes that bitch. That's just me, you know, either Madaratsu, Tsukiyomi, or Totsuka Blade, you know? <laughs> methods. Or just a simple Genjutsu and then just like cuts off her head like he did at Rochimaru and then continues on with the next, right? You know? I think the right Kage is going to be the only threat. Um... Oh, actually, I forgot. This is all of Hokages. I'm an idiot. I'm over here thinking it's a five Kage summit, bro. Um, but, you know, I, I, yeah, Sonata gets slammed. She gets, come on. What, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing? Into his killing blow. So there would just never be a situation to where she, I could see her connecting with the original Itachi or where he put And, and even with equal, and, like, or relative stats, he would still win based upon abilities and jutsu and intellect. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> to actually, like, his real body uh, if he does if she does obviously he gets one shot but she, it would just never get to that point she doesn't have the speed edge on him i will say though you can make a case he would not be able to put her down permanently or damage her with a lot of the basic that's fair or basic fire style as sonata's durability is pretty impressive eating moderate is second that's speeds. another bad thing about sonata too though is she in character likes to just straight up eat attacks when she does the the hundreds heals thing you know what i mean and that's bad because if she gets hit by a Madaratsu, or even the Totsuka Blade, that she's done. You know what I mean? Like, she is done. Now, to be fair, she can probably be able to prolong the inevitable with a Madaratsu because she could probably, you know what I mean, like, just constantly heal while getting burned. So she, I don't think she would naturally die immediately. Unless you think, like, it would, it would just disintegrate immediately, whatever, you know. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, so you can still argue for Sonate. Or she could, like, maybe cut off the part of the body that it, it happened and then, you know, like, to heal it or whatever. She definitely can't regrow uh, limbs and, you know, body parts because, like, at least when she, we see her body get cut in half, she couldn't grow it back. You could technically argue she was didn't have any chakra, so maybe that's why. And she does say it's just like Hashirama where it's instant regeneration and she can repair, I think, what? It was, like, organs, yada, yada, blah, blah. So maybe she can. I don't know. But if it's Totsuka Blade, she's done. Absolutely done, you know? Uh, good night, bro. Uh, good night. Gotta head to bed, but great stream. Absolutely, brother. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you. I'll or, make sure to post it on YouTube if you're interested, too. I mean, even if you want to, like, take it another way, you can consider the fact that she has to tank the recoil of her own Yeet. punches. Although, this isn't supported by the novels, which do, does say she breaks her own bones and heals them. Uh -huh. So, take whichever interpretation you want. I knew it! Tsunade, though, is that she's 100% getting nagged by Amada Rasu or Suki I'm gonna be honest, I Both. didn't know that was in the novels. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, what's it called? But that, that makes sense. Like, look at Rock Lee, you know what I mean? Both will hit faster than she can evade or deal with. Amada Rasu will just tear through her. And even if she doesn't, and she actually is able to combat it with her regen, it will consume a ton of chakra. Oh, yeah. you want an example? A fatigue Tsunade just slaps away Madara's fire style flame caterwaul, and she was affected by it, but she was planning on regenerating it after taking the backlash. She would try to, even if she tried to do the same with the Madarasu, A, it might end up just like draining a ton of her chakra, although her 
step supplies are pretty high, so I wouldn't see that. Uh, but then it would just fall to Itachi to just use another fresh MS technique, which he'd be able to. So whether that be Susano, Totsuka Blade, it doesn't really matter. It's just that for the Amaterasu point, you would just have to argue how fast it would burn versus the speed of her regeneration. Yeah. Tsukiyomi is also just going to completely rip her apart. She has no way to oh, counter. Oh, yeah, she's done. Yeah. It's going to hit done. instantly. Yeah. Kakashi figured that the only way he even had a chance is because he actually thought Itachi was going to use a basic Sharingan Genjutsu. And he had a Sharingan to use, like, pretty much fight against it defensively. Same thing with Sasuke. And the problem with these two examples against Tsukuyomi is that, A, in part one, Itachi just blatantly lets Kakashi live. And Kakashi knows he could have killed him. But yeah. the same thing with Sasuke, it's due to the fact that because Itachi is letting him live in that encounter, it begs the question of how valid is Sasuke breaking through Tsukuyomi because we know Itachi can kind of let off the gas and let people get out of it. Even in the part one data book for Tsukuyomi, it's just touted as the most powerful Genjutsu. I know the third data book talks about with his masterful use of the Sharingan, Sasuke defeats the Mangikyo Sharingan. But again, I, this this is almost like a question in the data book. It's like, is it because of his deep hatred towards his brother? Like, the data book almost doesn't know how if Sasuke broke it, out it, of it. Like, bro, Sasuke's that's even worse. Even the data book is applying skepticism. Like, is it, you know, or did it, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, so in, in, a, in a simple consensus, what and TG is absolutely correct in what he's advocating, even though he's playing devil's advocate, um... The higher possibility of things is definitely Atachi let him out and Sasuke did not break out of it. And the reason why is because Obito further substantiates that and says if Atachi wanted you dead, you would be dead. Uh, you know, blah, blah, all this shit, all this shit, you know what I mean? And that the, the fight was already um, calculated and he had to push you hard, yada, yada. And not only that, if we analyze the statements verbatim by Kakashi as well, during in the beginning, Shippuden, when he's fighting against 30% uh, Atachi along with uh, Lady Chiyo there, Lady Chiyo's not worried at all. She's talking shit. She's like, oh, don't worry. Uh, Chiyo Genjutsu is easy to counter. You just do this and this and this. And then Kakashi's like, nope, that's not how it works at him. He has a Mingekyo shotting gun, and his is a hacks Genjutsu, to where it basically can uh, manipulate space and time freely, to where if you get hit by it, there's no way of getting out because the damage is already done, because this motherfucker can do it in a picosecond, basically, and yada yada, you know? So it, it's broken as fuck. It, basically, if you get hit by uh, Sukiyomi, you're done. You're, like, there's no way of getting out. You're absolutely fucked. Because by the time it's even realized you got hit by it, the psychological damage already went through. And you either you're dead or you're just so fucked up you pass out and you're in a coma. Like what happened to Kakashi and Sasuke. Not only that, it's even worse. Kakashi says it. Okay, a uh, fucking uh, Itachi says it as well. Um, KCM Naruto says it. If you get hit by, you're done. And mind you, they're too perfect to Judiki. Okay, so... It, there's no way to get out of it. You can't break out of it. You can't, you know, uh, stop it or anything. Now, resisting is a whole other can of worms. Um, and there's, like, evidence along the lines that you need, like, you need to have an MS as well in order to potentially resist uh, the Sukiyomi. But if you get hit by it, okay, you're done. All right? So it's that simple. And Sinade has no way to resist it. And if she looks at it in his eyes, GG. Comparatively, also only really able to compete with Itachi's Mangekyo when he has his EMS, when they break each other out. His EMS Gunjutsu is what's compared to Itachi Sukiyomi. So it wouldn't make sense for his basic Sharingan to just be on that level. So any chakra control arguments just don't apply to Sukiyomi. It just hits way too that, hard. That's a, good, that's a good point as well. Refutation of uh, Sasuke with Kabuto, where Sasuke does normal Mangekyo Genjutsu, Itachi does Sukiyomi, you know? So it's like, what, we really gonna sit here and say heavy Sasuke is built like EMS Sasuke with his MS? Like, come on, bro. Way <laughs> too fast. Tsunade doesn't really have any options, but I will say Itachi is kind of forced to use his MS against Tsunade. It's just fortunate that a lot of his early MS abilities just do pretty much take her out. Itachi's a Matarasu, also seen just blatantly blitzing a uh, gray haired Nagato. The same gray haired Nagato who could react to the likes of version 2B. So. It, it, it's not like the Amaterasu speed is pretty significant. If you also oh, have yeah. another perspective, you could talk about the Obito example, which I'll talk about a little bit more later in the video since I think Obito used Kamui to escape it. But the fact that Itachi could actually tag him while he's physically focusing on materializing and not passively, you know, using Kamui. And, and that's crazy. Like the fact that Orange Mask Obito with Speed Blitz in close range and then Nagato at a, at a slight distance with Speed Blitz as well. That's pretty cracked. You know what I mean? Like, come on. <laughs> Before he could, like, switch back. 
I think is pretty crazy of a feat, like prep wise. So there just shouldn't be any question about Tsunade getting tagged by it. Something interesting for Tsunade though, is that she would probably just destroy the Uchiha hideout. But again, right? Even if she does destroy it, it doesn't really change too much in the grand scheme of it. But she can kind of mitigate that close range advantage that maybe Itachi might have with this Genjutsu. But considering Tsunade is a close range fighter anyway, it's like if she has to move away to get do better against Itachi, she's not going to be doing well regardless. Next up, we have Hiruzen. Uh, I made that Sani comparison earlier. Uh, yeah. I will say though, Hiruzen kind of similar to Itachi where he has these conditioning issues. However, he's far worse considering basic ninjutsu and shadow clones are an issue for him. Now, I will say this here really quick. Hiruzen's a little bit of a, of a certain exception. If it's, like, younger Hiruzen, where he's, like, during the Ninetales incident and he's, like, working with Minato to save everyone, that Hiruzen was just flat-out stated and just emphasized to be stronger than the Sonning. Even though Ochimaru says if you were 10 years on, younger, you would have killed me. You know what I mean? Um, so, and it's even further shown when old Hiruzen can be able to beat him, right? You know, or at least stalemate in the end, you know? Uh, well, not still, mate, but, like, you get what I'm saying. He beat him in the exchanges, and then he was able to sacrifice his life and take away his arms, right? That's still very impressive. Um, so, you know, just putting that out there, but say it, either way, it doesn't matter. It applies. Here is in scales to hit the Sonic, you name blah, blah, blah. Get the picture. That means he would lose as well. Um, even if it was younger, here is in. Sure, he could be slightly above, um, but Itachi is just way above. He's, like, in that next level shit. You know what I mean? He's on there with Sage Mode and KCM. And the only people that are built like that is Pain and Obito and Minato. Not Irizen. And being above the likes of Orochimaru also isn't as, pre as impressive in this case as Itachi is just more impressive than Orochimaru and has better statements in comparison to him and Hiruzen, specifically off of Orochimaru. And people need to understand that Orochimaru glazing What's up with Itachi that? is just... Oh, what? What's up with that chicken, bro? <laughs> Whatever. Or fish. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Yo, that low-key, that's going to be the thumbnail right there, bro. I'm going to hang on a minute. That's hilarious. No. What are we doing, bro? <laughs> hang on. Let me get that shit. Oh, that's funny as fuck. Hang on. Boop. I got it. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, bro. All right, let's go. A crazy feat considering who he's willing to fight. This motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. Like, this dude's a smoke demon. He has no qualms pulling up on heroes, and he has no qualms on pulling up on Four Tails Naruto, like, at all. He never has any issues about any of these fighters. But he's on, he's like Itachi's number one glazer. And this is an encounter with Bay Sharingan Itachi who are you can make a case it isn't as developed with his ms since that's implied to be when he first joined the akatsuki a lot of heroes in arsenal also just isn't as relevant towards like itachi like you can make a good case yeah here's in fire style which is regarded to be at some of the peak fire style in the series at least from what we've seen uh, ex excluding like enton just might be able to beat itachi's out but again like this is the type of fight where Hiruzen's kind of going to need to get momentum. He's going to need to summon Edma and stuff like that. And considering how close quarters the Uchiha hideout is, he's in prime range for Itachi's harder hitting techniques. Even if you argue that Hiruzen's like combat speed in this situation is above the likes of Orochimaru from their little scuffle, and we all Itachi just would be able to replicate this with the Sukiyomi and like MS techniques respectively. And you know, this is also consistent if you go off the Shisui novel stuff with him needing to sidestep any gazes in order to, you know, put somebody under the influence of the Monkyo Sharingan. But in that situation, he was referencing Kodo, so I wouldn't make that leap to just say like he could Sukiyomi people without them looking in his eyes. So Hiruzen shouldn't possess any speed like too far outside of a Itachi. And one of his win cons, like the Reaper Dead Seal, again, Itachi would just never let him get that close. And would be able to play around him with clones and whatnot. And really wouldn't... You know, Heroes and Tsunade are at that tier where they're not really... If they are going to force Itachi to expend Chakra with the MS. But it's not going to be to the point where he gets pushed to like a high diff scenario. Like one technique is all he really needs to finish off either of these Yeah, fights. hell no. So, no you know, no. Heroes and yeah, Tsunade... Itachi would win. It'd be a low diff fight. It'd be a low diff. You, you could even argue no diff because of how bad he shits on Ultimaru twice. You know what I mean? Like... You can even argue that, but if you're being generous, a low diff. Low diff, bare minimum. Unfortunately, I think just take an L here. Uh, Hiruzen definitely does better. And it kind of sucks because, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say for Hiruzen. But, like, 
He just doesn't have much when he's alive. And I'm not using any Edo characters for this fight because we don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. But, but them graphics are. <laughs> them graphics are something. Hey, but that game was goaded, you know? <laughs> I don't know. It's my video. I will also add, too, that if you're under the interpretation that Hebi Sasuke surpasses Orochimaru, that also just makes Itachi more impressive because there's a point in the fight where Itachi and Sasuke have a shuriken clash. And Itachi literally out perception blitzes. He's a pretty much just shows he's like a blitz tier above Sasuke because he's able to weave hand signs for a clone during yeah, the yeah. clash. Well, well, he basically, when he did a Kakashi, he gave Sasuke the same fucking treatment. He perception blitzed him. When he has a three tomo shotting gun, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Sasuke wasn't able to perceive it with his developed Sharingan. The same thing happens to Kakashi in part one, so it's literally too bad. Sasuke, he's just so but fast. Like, he was that much farther above Sasuke in their fight. Which, you know, it just, it just goes to show. I will say though, the heavy Sasuke Orochimaru stuff, I think, really only matters when discussing no arms Orochimaru. I don't think you know heavy Sasuke surpasses full power Orochimaru or anything like that. Next up, we have Donzo, and you know Donzo's interesting because I, he's weird in the sense that. All of our lightsabers are specifically designed for heavy dueling and to celebrate hitting 100,000. You could Ah, I love Star Wars, but get the fuck out of here. Actually see a situation to where he could maybe outlast Itachi. Now, I will say again, Itachi should be greater from a stat perspective and he actually may not even need to spam MS techniques due to the nature of how he fights. Like he doesn't necessarily need to just use MS techniques to assess like the, the difference between Sasuke and Itachi is that a sasuke isn't gonna have complete intel on izanagi which itachi does so he isn't gonna need to just waste his magikyo sharingan to assess donzo's ability yep, itachi would definitely have an intel advantage for sure yep okay and like the duration of his jutsu which is plus like izanagi is also uh, designed to counter it so like as a last resort if itachi had to which he never would have he could use izanami and donzo's fucked <laughs> it's a direct counter it's literally kryptonite it was doing Gonzo should also be susceptible to a lot of itachi's basic jutsu this would be consistent for a couple reasons starting with heroes and being superior to donzo which is implied it's actually stated in one of the novels that heroes and just straight up beat donzo too for the hokage spot however oh, wow. this could be referenced politically as well or both we don't okay, know yeah, now for true. donzo i'm gonna start him off with izanagi in this you know for being fair, because otherwise he just gets absolutely raffle stomped. Because Itachi's <laughs> basic stats would be higher than this Sasuke's, he would just not struggle as much as Donzo because Donzo's more of a rival to this Sasuke outside the Susano. Like, they're, they're pretty much on par with one another. There's actually a scene, too, uh, towards the end of the fight where Donzo's pretty much able to evade Sasuke's Shidori just while yeah. he has a hole in him. So they're actually very comparable. And I will say too, Donzo is at a bit of a disadvantage in this encounter because Itachi's fire style is going to be way more useful against his win style, which Sasuke didn't really capitalize, but that's more so just because he was just beating Donzo down with the Susano. Donzo's only real win cons are to like Izanagi Itachi straight up, which I don't even see necessarily happening because in character, in character, Itachi fights very similar to Kakashi, where he just leads with a lot of clones and a lot of diversionary maneuvers to open yeah, up. Yeah, Itachi doesn't underestimate. He doesn't let his guard down. He doesn't underestimate. He's not going to pull Shishri, rest in peace. He's not enemy. He's not like Sasuke, you know, or anyone else. Like, he's very smart. He doesn't underestimate people. He's very humble. And that's just kind of that. And he, he would know. And his sensory is also impressive, as we've seen in Shippuden as well. So, um, not only could he be able to sense Donzo... Um, you know what I mean? But, like, come on, bro. Like, he's, it's Itachi. What are we doing? <laughs> Potential Genjutsu or just, like, kunai slashing her throat. On top of Itachi having full knowledge of it. So, I, I couldn't necessarily see that being valid. The other big one is Koro Matsukami. And, again, this depends if you think, like, the version that Donzo uses is similar in strength to the one that Itachi would use against EMS Sasuke. You know, Obito doesn't think it would have been much against him, but Obito also had a spare Izanagi, so we don't know what he was going to do in response to that. True. I will say, too, Itachi is aware of Kodo, so that's also present. Like, Itachi has full knowledge that Donzo did take Shisui's eye, so nothing in Donzo's arsenal would necessarily be surprising to Itachi, but Donzo's best option is just to Kodo off-rip and just, like, convince Itachi to, like, stand down as he, like, slits Itachi's throw or something like that. Yeah. Again, to what Shisui does to that Yuga member in the novel. Other than that, though, 
Donzo just really doesn't have the capabilities. Like, Itachi, from a stat perspective, is coming in very confident. He'll be able to go the distance. He'll be able to kill Donzo with this. And the problem arsenal. is, that Donzo's people... getting speed blitz before he can even fucking do anything. Now, if he has Izanagi already on, obviously it's going to delay the inevitable slightly, but Tachi's just going to keep killing him. It'd be far, far fucking worse than what Sasuke did. You know what I mean? And that's basically it. You know, he's just greatly, vastly more superior. If he lands a Tsukiyomi. One shot, Awadaratsu, one shot, Susano's one shot, and I mean, you name it, he has sensory, so he's not getting off guard or anything like that either. Even if, like, you know, Donzo was successful in surprising or catch him off guard, which would be out of character, in character, Itachi always uses clones, and you name it like TG said, and so he'd be fine, I mean, or it'd be like a Genjutsu as well, I mean, because Itachi's always using Genjutsu, you know, like... So, like, at the end of the day, I just, he's not. You know what I mean? And then Itachi even threatened him after the Ochiha incident. He flat out, like, had the MS out, and he said, if you try to do anything, you know, blah, blah, yada, yada, or disobey me, or hurt my brother, yada, yada, I will release intel to the villages, and, yada, and et cetera. You know what I mean? So, like, he wasn't playing games. He flat out just threatened him, and Donzo just shit his pants and had a sweat on his on his cheek, and there was nothing he could do, bro. You know what I mean? He was at Itachi's mercy, you know? So meme about Donzo being the only shinobi who dies to shuriken and i know people say that that's only in the anime but it's heavily implied that's what happened in the manga too since Donzo's eye shuts mid-air as we see on panel that he's jumping towards sasuke as well so it is heavily heavily implied this is kind of how that went down in the manga what's also interesting about Donzo is that we see in the sasuke versus Donzo fight that Donzo is extremely susceptible to genjutsu yeah. a far inferior genjutsu in the form of sasuke's now sasuke actually does have time manipulation in the like jin Raiden novel why'd i say it like that but point uh -huh. is despite the fact that you can say once these anagi is activated I'll, I'll say this though Man can do a fucking finger genjutsu, or even a basic visual shotting against genjutsu, and he's slamming. Like, you saw how bad he slammed the Orochimaru? But I thought he could just spam that shit, and that's not really that taxing on his chakra. Or stamina either, and it, Donzo just dies over and over, bro. Like, Donzo's fucked. He's just fucked in every way, bro. <laughs> that Donzo can, you know, he's obviously going to continuously respawn. Like, Atachi, Atachi would just continue to speed blitz him and just kill him over and over until he runs out. He's not going to let him do Kodo. He knows Donzo would technically have Kodo as well. You know what I mean? Unless you want to take Intel away for the matchup, but if it's in character or based upon everything we know in Naruto, he would know he has Kodo as well and not underestimate him and try to obviously prevent that from occurring, you know, or... Technically, if it really comes to it, Tachi could use Izanagi as well, you know, the saying, or he could use Izanami, which literally counters Izanagi. Ta like, Itachi is the worst opponent for Donzo, I'm sorry. ...to respawn past the MS the worst. he does show that he is susceptible to these illusionary tactics. So if Itachi actually does have a tighter hold on Donzo, he may actually force him to undo the Izanagi as well, which would also be a GG. So the Genjutsu counter aspect, even though Donzo does have a good defense for it since he does have a his, at least in this situation a sharingan would be active it still wouldn't be enough generally speaking for itachi oh no Baku isn't as relevant since he saw kakashi as an example bro and sasuke come on he's not an ochiya yeah no like it, it, come on <laughs> because the msl that's debatable because she shwees but you know this is such a closed space i can't really see donzo really forcing itachi outside of the uchiha hideout unlike somebody like Tsunade. his wind style kind of gets countered in this situation it would just really amp itachi's own fire style or just combust and backfire on donzo it would just be a lot of what itachi did to sasuke with using a lot of diversionary crows into slamming attacks and considering he has full intel on everything donzo has it's just there's nothing really donzo should have that would surprise Literally. him and i could see an argument to say that donzo might also have the uh, you know a lot of intel on itachi as well due to him having knowledge on the amaterasu and Tsuyomi. Yep. but even then right if both people have intel tell and itachi's still greater that just means itachi's gonna perform better itachi yeah. being and arguably itachi. so he's more intelligent as well come on let's be real if we compare feats in the narrative come on bro <laughs> even even as a kid at what he was seven and he had the knowledge of an okage and you name it wisdom come on combat setting so aside from maybe the kodo stuff i just can't see a situation to where donzo would really just be able to out fatigue itachi or force him to use ms techniques as again 
he's not in the same position as Sasuke. He doesn't really need to fish for intel. I will say though, if he does initiate the Susano, that will definitely grant him a lot of Danzo's eyes. It's just kind of a matter of like how the fight is structured. And what people don't bring up is that Sasuke does get stronger after this fight. His hatred actually peaks out and his Susano evolves again. And it's actually the same Susano that he uses when he unveils his internal Mangekyo Sharingan. And after, you know, it peaks out and his eyes burn out, he gets Itachi's eyes and immediately starts growing in strength despite not actually being able to use them. So the, the difference between like Itachi, who should be more comparable to EM as Sasuke, and this Sasuke cannot be overstated. It is a pretty yeah. big difference. So I definitely think Itachi should also get the pass in this scenario. Yeah, isn't that crazy that <laughs> MS me. Itachi has that full form and Sasuke had it like with EMS? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Ito. Now... I'm not gonna lie, this section's a lot. If you're looking at the video, this section's probably one of the longer ones because this could be its own oh, video. I, I, so can, I can tell, bro. I saw how long that shit is. God damn. <laughs> I my best to kind of like condense it down, but this, <coughs> this topic can be its own video. Keep that in mind. Now starting off, I do want to establish a, a couple things that will make it easier to discuss this fight. Starting off, I think there is a fundamental difference between Hokage Minato and Joni Minato, making it okay. so that any feats displayed by Joni Minato are just not his peak. There are a couple ways we can confirm this, and this is relevant with, to the discussion, so just bear with me, guys. Uh, we know that from his data book entry that he did continue to engage in battle after becoming Hokage, with the entry reading as followed. His command ability fostered in real battle must have been put into practical use even after he took the position as Okage. This is very interesting, especially when you pair it up with some supplementary statements, such as this statement made on chapter 298, right around the time part one of Naruto was wrapping up, specifically after his battle with Sasuke, which regards Minato as having unrivaled strength. Even taking this as only in reference to Shinobi who are alive, it still is a pretty good statement when considering a more prime Itachi, Raikage, Old Heroes, and a full power Orochimaru were all introduced at this point in the story. One could chalk this up to Kishimoto switching the narrative on the Hokage hierarchy, but I still do think this is consistent with some interpretations of Minato's strength, even the higher ones placing him more so on KCM2 Naruto's level. There's also the Raikage stuff with him saying he's the fastest since Minato died. People, this is somewhat debatable as some people believe that the whole Minato, uh, you know, the Raikage not boasting Fire. speed inferior to the Yellow Flash is either in reference to Hokage Minato or Joni Minato. The reason this is a debatable topic is because Joni Minato is more so known as the Yellow Flash. However, like the whole counter argument to this is that would you really lose your nickname after becoming Hokage? Or would you like there be just kind of like a title change from like the Yellow Flash to the fourth Hokage? Yes. I will say it makes more sense that people would not refer to Minato as the Yellow Flash as Hokage. Since in a similar capacity, you don't really see people refer to Kakashi as the copy ninja after he becomes Hokage. Yeah. There's actually a bit of consistency for this in the series that characters kind of do change their titles when like changing forms or like moving into a new position. An example of this is kind of Jiraiya against Pain where he says he's going to like shed his like... He's pretty much saying, like, I'm evolving past the Sanin as he's about to enter Sage mode. And that he's now going to be, like, referred to as a Sage. If you're asking my personal... Yeah, he, he even says that in part one, too. He says, oh, I'm like... You say, I forgot. It's, I don't know exactly verbatim, but it's something along the lines, like, oh, I've even surpassed, like, the legendary Sanin status. I'm now a Sage about me. You know what I mean? So, part one and should put it. You know what I mean? And if I'm really even going further in the anime, it, I, don't, I don't know if it's in the manga. I don't remember. But in the anime... It shows him as a kid learning to master Sage Mode. So, just say. Opinion, I've always gone on the it interpretation that this is more so in reference to Joni Minato. The scene just implies it, like that's the Minato being used as reference. Yeah. That's the Minato that A has been known for fighting, the, a, the Minato that A has had a couple confrontations with. The Minato is also suppressed versus A and B and does say that he likes A and B, which does matter because Minato is a pretty forward thinking person. So, Rex. him like kind of wanting to resonate. Hey, I'm telling you right now, person. Loco would not be happy at TG right now, bro. He, yo, he hates Minato. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Who be a Kage and have influence over the world is pretty... It, it, it is a pretty big deal. The fact that Minato during the time of the third grade ninja war was also praised as the fastest paints a pretty compelling narrative that he would just be above a fourth Rakage A. And even if you did take this statement for the fourth Rakage being as fast as Hokage Minato, which I mean, if you do, you know, I won't fault you. Like, I think it is a fair enough interpretation, even though I don't think it's as, as I don't think it's as implied. You would never be able to differentiate like what that exactly means. Like, it, it's, that's not obviously referencing reaction speed. 
at most you could say combat speed but we know the fourth raikage does not have instantaneous movement the flying thunder god being what actually made minato the fastest so it would just couldn't be in reference to that this also being supplemented with the fact that minato can keep pace with work yeah, it's Kage definitely walking. not flying raijin is far far superior than body flicker which is what raikage and naruto are doing so absolutely flying raijin is broken it's literally transcends space and time itself it's a hacks jutsu for speed <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that even even madara and hashirama are not faster than him bro come on off fighting against black zetsu like it's an off screen right, fight it, it, it was even able to help against jubido out of all people bro or even help with eighth gate guy in jubi madara come on it's flying raijin's cracked <laughs> that's who know it's like they're persistent with like smoke everywhere so Ita Minato would have to be relative on some spectrum. Otherwise, Kakashi would just be outdoing them. And Black Zetsu would say, Kakashi, you're the problem. But he's like, nah, you guys are persistent. Okay, that was a lot. I'm sorry. It's not a Minato solo video. I just had to, like, this is a big. Listen, look, you, look at the, what, this match. Wait, got let, smoked me, let me hear it, that man. though, like, real quick. On some spectrum. That's not obviously referencing reaction speed. At most, you could say combat speed, but we know the fourth Raikage does not have instantaneous movement. The Flying Thunder God being what actually made Minato the fastest. So it would just couldn't be in reference to that. This also being supplemented with the fact that Minato can keep pace with War or Kakashi while fighting against Black Zetsu. Like it's an off screen fight, but Zetsu notes like they're persistent with like smoke everywhere. So Ita Minato would have to be relative on some spectrum. Otherwise, Kakashi would just be outdoing them. And Black Zetsu would say, Kakashi, you're the problem. But he's like, nah, you guys are persistent. Okay, that was a lot. I'm sorry. Okay. It's not a Minato solo video. I just had to like, this is a big, listen, like you look at the, what, this matchup's got smoke to it, man. Like, you're <laughs> gonna tell me you don't hear about Minato versus Itachi and start sweating because of how yeah. hot this matchup is. Now, with that being said, Itachi from like, like a Taijutsu perspective, like combat speed, is just not on, you know, it, it's more consistent that he wouldn't be on this Minato's level, at least with his like base tone Moi Sharn on Taijutsu. I know everybody brings up the KCM1 Naruto encounter. I think that encounter can be debated to be either way, like a good feat for Itachi or it just not being indicative. Since, you know, people give it like, okay, that's obviously Itachi when he's suppressed on the autopilot. But also it could be argued, yeah. okay, that Naruto is kind of just more so fishing for information against Itachi and not going all out. So it would be more consistent to say like Minato would be for all intents and purposes faster. For Itachi to more so compete with Minato's speed, it would definitely have to be diversionary tactics into his Magikyo techniques. Now, I'll start off by saying this. Now, there's a lot to these this fight. Like, off-rip, Minato's gonna do what he does in character and throw kunai all over the battlefield. And for Itachi, right? Because Itachi actually does have a bit of knowledge on Minato. He knows about Minato. He knows about Kushina. Because he has heard of stories about the third great ninja war and seen portions of it, he also should have an idea of Flying Raijin or heard about Minato's like instant teleportation. So he would have a decent idea of what Minato is capable. Now, I will say this kind of goes in line with one of Itachi's win conditions in this fight, right? Because I will say this starting off, Minato benefits the longer this fight goes on because Itachi's best win condition, in my opinion, is to just Sukuyomi Minato. Which obviously yeah. Minato has to look at his eyes. So if he's obviously tele like throws his kunai and starts teleporting around without looking at Itachi's eyes, it's definitely a lot harder for Itachi to get that instant Genjutsu. Facts. Now, it could be a bit more questionable for basic Genjutsu, I won't lie. There's also that other statement made in Data Book 3 that talks about Naruto being the only one who can surpass the fourth Hokage. While alive, Arakage and Sekitachi are around at the time. Now, I don't want to get carried away with the statements because you do kind of sometimes have to take the Data Book statements with a grain of salt because certain statements yeah. are made without certain feats or certain parts of the story being introduced with exactly. certain characters. So I won't die on this hill. I'm just more so introducing a narrative that is being perpetuated since we don't know how deep Minato's Genjutsu resistance is. But honestly, this is kind of a situation to where the location really matters because you're kind of in a similar situation where Minato fights Obito for the first time and he's like holding Naruto as a baby. And Minato just like body flickers, pops through Obito and grabs Naruto. It's yeah. like, dude, instead of Itachi being the one to move towards Sasuke, Minato's just gonna dart over to that chair. So it paints the idea that Itachi's better win condition for Genjutsu really is only applicable at the beginning of this fight, which I know you probably probably inferred just from like listening to this video and like the other matchups. Because after that, Minato is just going to be darting around way too much to be making direct eye contact with Itachi. With that being said, though, Sukiyomi, and this is the reason it's like one of the strongest abilities in the series, it still is a game changer. It still it does is. win him this encounter. 
It's just a matter of getting it off. Minato throwing all his kunai in the room, though, could actually be a hindrance to him. And I do think it is to a pretty big degree because he's obviously not going to have as much as much of an area to like teleport around to unless he like breaks through the like ceiling of the uchiha hideout and throws a kunai out there which he could do but more so immediately for example if oh, itachi recognizes the threat with minato and attempts to amaterasu him off rip minato it, first and foremost is avoiding it you know if the fourth right yeah. is i kind of covered the minato stuff with him yeah uh, minato argued yeah, if it's from a distance he's Definitely avoiding that shit. And now, if it's in close range, that's where it's interesting. But I do think his flying Raijin would allow him to even survive close range. Because flying Raijin is just fucking crap. Do you know what I mean? Like, but body flicker speed, he could also avoid that from a distance due to what Raikage did. Pretty better reaction feats. I would. Uh... I would even say, like, Moderus Truth Seeking Orbs, which, I, although I don't think is the best feat, could still indicate he has a better reaction feat than anything the Raikage has done. Even, like, Six Gate Lee, right, who reacts to it. Granted, we don't see where Lee comes from off-panel, but even that Lee isn't, like, he's kind of crazy. Like, this is the same Lee that cut Madara in half before Madara threw up a Susana ribcage. Like, maybe you could argue he didn't want to sever the connection to the Tentails, but at that point... You would think you would prefer to stay on the ten tails than let someone cut through you. So I'm just saying. But again, I don't think the truth seeking orbs are like the best feat. Like a lot of people do react to them. But again, the people who do are generally like higher tier characters. So Itachi could actually drag the Amaterasu around the room and take out all the kunai that Minato may have placed as like Minato is trying to teleport around, which would obviously present a big issue and like force the fight outside. Now we'll say too, the minute this fight does get outside. It, it drastically favors Minato, and I'm going to talk about that more in a bit because he's just... Now, I'll, I'll say this too, though. Like, I'm just imagine that, though. Like, this legendary fight. Like, um, uh, Tachi's and Madarat's all the kunai, and so we can't t TP there, you know? And, like, and Minato's moving around, and they're fighting, whatever. Like, bro, it'd be such a cool fight, bro. And even if, like, Minato, like, got behind Itachi, and he's about to hit him with a rising honor, or, like, let's say he's attacking from a blind spot, you know? Like, then Itachi activates his Susano and bam, cancels out the right. Like, that, it would just be so cool to watch. You know, like, regardless of whoever you think wins, like, imagine if it was, like, a, like, a legit competitive fight and you're just seeing all that. It'd be so cool, bro. <laughs> gonna chuck more kunai i don't want to say he has like infinite kunai but this when have you i want to ask you this when has minato ever run out of kunai in any of his yeah. fights never never once even in the war this dude just he's got all of them like i don't know what like, you people talk about like not only that if you guys also count the movies he can duplicate his kunais he it's it's shadow clone shuriken literally he just, just like fucking sh shoots out so many of them them bitches you know so tandem paper bombs toby rama but like can we talk about tandem kunai minato like i'm just saying uh -huh. so in any aspect where this fight does begin indoors i do think itachi does have a pretty distinct advantage due to the nature of his arsenal even with the Matarasu, the whole Genjutsu point, because Minato is in prime Genjutsu range, it's going to be a lot easier for Itachi. And the thing about Itachi, too, is that if he does make clones in this scenario, he could actually bait Minato into FTGing into an exploding clone, which would be pretty disastrous. Or any clone yeah. that Minato would, like, take down would just, like, dissolve into crows. Same thing with Itachi. Like, you know when you see him get struck in the chest by Kabuto in the fight and then he dissolves into crows? There, co there could be something similar here, because Minato's combat speed should not be a blitz tier above what he taught you with his mangekyo can perceive even ignoring the kcm1 stuff if you follow the dot line of like you know the train of thought that he taught you is more comparable to like the ems sasuke and he's on that level that sasuke is also more comparable to a more developed naruto now that's kind of like a trash statement i will admit because there are ways to say like that sasuke gets stronger but even then, like, his development shouldn't put him a whole tier above the previous version that was fighting against Itachi, if you yeah. know what I'm saying. It would be more of a passive buff via hatred and him just using his eyes. Not really this yeah. whole giant tier increase from Naruto, like, unlocking Kurama. But this kind of goes back to the whole stamina point, right? Because Minato is definitely one of those fighters that Ultimate is so clean, dude. to use those large portions of chakra into his ms techniques because basic fire style and clones just aren't going to cut it they're really going to be diversionary tactics he's really going to have to couple them with his ms techniques and really kind of outplay minato and i will say once this fight does go outside so that's the video no i skipped it fuck me <laughs> all right we can we, i know exactly where we were though right right Tachi winning just plummets because he's gonna have been using up to use those large 
portions of chakra into his ms techniques because basic fire style and clones just aren't going to cut it they're really going to be diversionary tactics he's really going to have to couple them with his ms techniques and really kind of outplay minato and i will say once this fight does go outside the, the likelihood of itachi winning just plummet because he's gonna have been using up a bit of chakra at that point minuto is gonna be able to spread more markings outside he'll probably still have some markings inside the building in which case if itachi doesn't get that instant takedown he's not gonna be really able to tag minuto from that point forward and he his margin for error is just gonna be non-existent like he cannot make mistakes at that point and, and using up any ms technique pretty much makes it that he's gonna be that, cl that much closer to defeat there's this usano itself which also could be put into question now I, I will say right a lot of people are gonna point to the statement of minato having like strength on the rival of the ross and shuriken like rivaling the ross and shuriken I, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this statement isn't usable. It's a mistranslation. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. What? It's fiction. <laughs> I made it up. Uh, and it's weird to say because a lot of people have used this statement in the community for a while. But when we actually got it translated, Minato or like the fourth Hokage are never mentioned in the statement. They're oh, never wow. brought up. It's pretty horrendous, actually, how wow. much localization Viz threw in with this specific scan, which... Now, granted, I do think Minato's Rasengan is impressive. I just don't think it's one-shotting a Susano. I hate to I hate to be that oh, guy, no, yeah. but I just don't think it is. Even the one-shot really wouldn't support that. I don't really have to go into that because I made a video on it, so go check that out. I'm not going to get into that here. But yeah, there's there's no real way to argue that this Rasengan is just going to be blowing up the Susano. It's, it's just not possible. I take more time to talk about the Yadimir and exactly how strong but like, I'll say this, like, if you, if, if you grant, like, Minotaur, mind you, as a teen while fatigued and, po and poisoned and even severely injured, okay, with his incomplete rising on, and it's able to fight against a uh, full power nine tails, Bijubama is the same size as his launch against Hashirama. If you go along that logic and substantiate in that direction, then it, it should definitely fuck up Atachi Susano if it's, if he hits it anywhere else. Now, if he hits in the Automator, no, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, but if you don't think it scales to the, the nine tails like that or anything either, and you think, oh, you know, it just, I don't know, it's just not whatever, um, then obviously Itachi's okay. You know, he'll just he'll be able to tank it, you know? Itachi Susano is in durability, but I do talk about that in a future segment of this video, so bear with me, bear with me. But just know, basic kunai, Rasengans really aren't going to be cutting it at this point. But I will say, right, at this stage of the fight, it's not as if Minato really needs to be using that much like of an offensive approach here. Like he, he really could just time Itachi out at that point. And there's a lot of interesting stuff Minato can do, especially when discussing the Susano. You can make the argument that he could actually teleport the Susano itself away from Itachi if he has a mark set somewhere else just like grab it and teleport it out the susano does move with the user but it is possible to separate it so using space time ninjutsu as opposed to just like consciously holding the defense with you it's a little debatable i will grant you but there is that interpretation not to mention that minato also does have gamma bunta so if he ever does want to gain distance he can throughout this fight and just wait out itachi the biggest thing true. to argue for Itachi in this uh, specific situation is just his Totska Blade speed, which at its peak could be argued to be potentially superior to full power Nagato. And that's, you know, that's kind of a debatable topic. I know that kind of gets into Itachi versus Nagato, and I have a video on that. But to kind of like spark note to here, basically Itachi plunges the Totska Blade like throughout, like pretty much there's like a smoke cloud in front of Nagato, which inhibits his movement. Yeah. Itachi plunges the Totska Blade through it. Now, the whole thing where people get iffy is that the Totsuka Blade would have had to exit the, the smoke cloud, which would have given Nagato time to perceive it, and Nagato still didn't dodge. And when I say Nagato, I really mean Kabuto, because he's the one who's controlling that Nagato. Yeah. And I will say, too, this is kind of goes back to, like, where you interpret Minato's lore, because if you go, like, super more conservative and say, like, oh, he's super lame KCM1 level... Then you could actually see a case for the Totska Blade and like these, the Susano itself may be actually being somewhat comparable in speed since the Susano is like far faster than the user. So there's a layer to this discussion, which I can't get into every single crevice where there is some like minor interpretations and like minor concessions that do have to be had. Yeah. I just do want to acknowledge that. Reaper Dead Seal also doesn't matter too much since that only really results in a draw for Minato. Yeah, it's not going to do any good. Case, really just has the best advantage oh, poorly. Like, early uh. Genjutsu to Sukuyomi or just diversionary 
carry into Genjutsu because he's not going to allow for Minato to get any momentum, get any marks everywhere, and wear his stamina down and like it put it, push him to a point where his illness can really like come to the surface. One of the other ways I could potentially see maybe looking at Itachi versus Minato is maybe comparing them off Obito. Obito, who's more of like a pseudo rival to Minato at a younger age. Granted, Minato does just beat him, but obviously Obito would go on to get stronger. I know some people argue like Yellow sure. Mask versus Orange Mask Obito. However, it would make more sense for Orange Mask to be stronger. Uh, the, one way to argue this is the whole like arm situation. For those who don't know, Obito has like the wrong arm blown off from Minato. Basically, Kishimoto fucked up and just created a plot hole because he probably forgot which arm got blown Bruh. off. The, however, though, you know, it's kind of in the series. The end canon, like, what people say would be a reason for Obito getting stronger is him actually having more Senju cells as a response to compensate for that broken arm, which would lead Orange Mask Obito to be stronger, along with him having Izanagi. So, that's just one minor way, but yeah, Orange Mask should be stronger. You gotta look at how Obito treats Itachi as, like, a sort of threat and also a pseudo-rival, literally referring to him as an eyesore and, like, kind of, like, in a chess opponent of sorts. On this note, too, people have the idea that uh, Itachi perception blitzed Obito with the Matarasu. I will say, so th this feat's weird, right? I will say this first and foremost. It's pretty heavily implied that Obito did use Kamui to break through the Amaterasu. Now, the reason I say this is because the diction in the data book heavily implies it's Kamui because the way it describes it, like the whole space, using space time ninjutsu, and the language used is only used in reference to Kamui. It's not used during Izanagi. Okay. And we've seen Obito actually Kamui when he has things stuck on him, like Conan's paper bombs. The main thing I see people say with this is that, okay, Obi why would Obito go and fake getting hit by a Madarasu? Like, Obito also didn't fake being a jackass for like a hundred chapters for the sake of maintaining his cover under the Akad. Obito's just a capper. He's certified. He has his stamp. And it uh -huh. makes sense in the grand scheme of the series because it's a fair argument. Sasuke into a false sense of security. And him thinking that he could use a Matarasu against Obito, which Sasuke does do, and even Obito says, like, it's useless to get Sasuke stronger and have him sync with the Ghetto statue if I can't control him. So, this would work in just giving Sasuke that false sense of security and using him to control him, but the reason I bring this up is because Obito actually did have to make a point to materialize at that second and was caught off guard, so it makes more sense that he got tagged by it while he was consciously materialized and then just uh, kamui it after. I have to bring that up because I've heard it said that Itachi's Amaterasu is gonna just go ahead and just, you know, blitz past Obito's passive Kamui, which I just don't agree with. So, no, just a quick no, note, no. I also don't wait. If Obito has Kamui on, bro, he was able to Kamui Jubi Madara while it's passive. Like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, no, it's not hidden. But if it's off and he's, like, you know, tangible and he's there, then, yeah, you, you could definitely probably blitz because we've literally seen it, you know? I believe that would put him inherently above Minato. So, if I had to kind of, like, rate this battle, I would say, like, in the early fight, Itachi definitely has a distinct advantage unless you argue like Minato's that much faster. And then as the fight progresses, Minato just gains more and more momentum to the point where he just outlasts Itachi by yeah. just keeping his distance, teleporting around, and forcing him to expend So far, uh, so MS. far, a very good analysis. I'll say this since he's almost about to be, yeah, he's about to be done with the Itachi and Minato. Very, very, very contentious. There's many, many ways to go about it in substantia. It just depends on your perspective of how far you think Itachi is when it comes to the KCM and everything. Same thing for Minato, if you think he's only KCM1 or KCM2. Or if you think Minato is slightly above KCM1, you know, things like that, you name it. Um, it's It boils down to that line of logic and scaling. And obviously that's going to be a big deal and go a long way, especially if we analyze the feats. And analyze everything Itachi and Minato can do, you know? So it boils down to what's what, and, you know, that's just basically what you have, you know? So um, you kind of take out a grain of salt. Eventually, I will even do my own video at a certain point of uh, Itachi versus Minato, because I just think it's an incredible topic. It's very awesome of a topic to do. Many people have done it, all the goats. So, you know, that's what you're kind of working with. But anyway, let's get it techniques and with itachi that can come a couple different ways maybe baiting minato to ftg into an exploding clone and then again minato can just teleport back if he's able to react fast enough or just a madarasu minato as he teleports to a kunai or catch him under a genjutsu and then for minato it's a little simpler it just pretty much can catch itachi when he's backlashing from any of his like ms uses or just outlast him throughout this fight again yeah. i could maybe see itachi potentially working something out with the susano but 
it's just a little tougher. It's a little tougher in that situation because it gives Minato a lot more room to breathe. If this were Edo Tensei Itachi, though, I will say this would be a completely different discussion. Completely different discussion. But this is more so a second and weakened version of the character, which obviously makes it a lot harder for him to perform at his absolute peak consistently because from the moment the fight starts, he's going to be at a consistent decline. I don't yeah. want to gloss over this matchup because there is a lot to it. But to kind of like encapsulate it and generalize it. But again, like when you have these two characters, which is such high intellect. So this one's definitely very debatable. I would just say like early fight, Itachi has a distinct advantage. Late fight, Minato has a pretty distinct advantage. Next up, we have Tobirama. <sighs> man. Let me tell you something about Tobirama, man. With this character, I just... <laughs> All right, so he's, he's finally done with Itachi Minato. Before we get on to Tobirama, okay, um, I can't agree anymore with, with uh, TG. He did a very, very good job. It's It would be along that logic and line of scaling. There's nothing wrong with it. If you think uh, Minato's only KCM1 and you also grant Itachi, obviously there's either going to be equal stats or relativity, bare minimum. And it just boils down to who's the smarter man, right? Who's slightly faster, things like that. And it kind of just goes off from there. And you can argue multiple ways of either Minato winning or Itachi winning, etc. That's what you got, right? Um, then you have um, if, KC, if Minato's KCM2 level, there's even ways to argue that. Um, you know, based upon like when Guy and Kakashi sees him moving, like they're like so fast. And then it shows KCM2 Naruto with the exact look of the fourth Okage, you know. Um, then you even like see like uh, Nagato where he's able to like shit on KCM1 Naruto and Killer B as well. Um, and things like that, and if, you know, if Naruto needed, like, the power to fight Obito, whatever, at least to even have a chance, and you have Minato that's, like, you know, but, like, overall, you connect the dots, you get what I'm saying, you know? Um, so you have that logic. Obviously, if Minato's KCM2 and Tachi's KCM1, then it should be obvious, right? Um, so it's, it really just boils down to your perception of how far they are from one another, um, or if you just think Minato is slightly faster and it would be the same thing like what happened to Obito, but just to Itachi instead before he can even activate his Susano or anything, there's that too, you know what I mean? Um, so you have that, but it's it's very, very, very interesting. Um, and Itachi's Jutsu activation is no joke. His Susano, you know what I mean? Like he's able to react to Karen, he's able to, he's able to do a lot of things, you know? So um, it's really interesting. He, he's even able to react to EMS Sasuke's Susano, you know what I mean? Like from behind. So... Uh, Susano activation is no joke. He even fought against Sage One Kabuto and was able to activate it, that and to protect Sasuke and himself, etc. So it's it's really, really interesting. Um, it's very, very hard to definitively conclude who takes it. You can go either way. Fortunately, there's just no way to know. Um, but subjectively wise, possibility, you can argue for either or. I think there's a lot of evidence for both sides. Um, that's just kind of what you're working with. If I had to pick, I'd say Itachi. And I definitely even agree with TG. Early, he has the advantage. Minato late has the advantage. Um, but that's just me personally. So. I just never feel like I can win. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to put it like this. Because I like Toby Ramba. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, we're sitting at the bar. We're going to conversate for a sec. I like Toby Ramba a lot, right? What I don't like is Toby Rama fans. That's that's who I despise. Bruh. These dudes are unhappy. I don't know why they're unhappy, but they're forcing me to be unhappy, and that's what makes me. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Rama fans are just toxic, dude. Like I'm not saying that there's no toxic Minato fans either, but there probably is. But the majority of the Toby Rama Tard fan base, they're just toxic. They're haters, and it's like my way or the highway vibes, right? Or if they think you don't agree, then you're then you're dishonest or evil or Satan, you know what I mean? Or if they think you, or if you're repping Minato over Tobarama, then they think you're being dishonest or biased or whatever. Like you can't win. TG is not lying. Like it, it's really hard to please them unless you just blatantly concede and agree, you know what I mean? Then you're you're fucked. <laughs> it's literally this what you see right there with the Simpsons, bro. Like you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. Now, jokes aside, Tobirama's pretty impressive. I, now, I'll start off by saying this. Itachi's not really going to, like... It's kind of similar to Minato, where Itachi's not really going to be running into... Like, running through Tobirama in terms of pure speed. I think the Jubito running through Tobirama and Tobirama being relative enough to mark Obito is pretty much all you would really need to say. Now, I will... Some people are under the opinion that oh, Tobirama blitzed Obito five times. 
That's asinine. I'm not going to lie. I disagree <laughs> with that wholeheartedly. I, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. But I will say, being relative enough to actually mark Obito, even if he is, like, running through you, bad wording, but you get what I'm saying, is very impressive, especially since, like, Naruto at that point wasn't really able to discern what was going on in the battle because everything was happening too fast. So for Toriyama to be kind of acting like this with such quick thinking and reaction times is very impressive. Now, I don't want to repeat a lot of what I said with the Minato stuff. I think Toriyama and Minato actually are very similar in this type of situation. I, where they, like, Toriyama struggles a lot more in the early fight. I think he, you could argue with Minato he comes in a bit stronger with the stat perspective off the Obito stuff. Obviously, the Genjutsu point is present. Now, I will say, Toriyama does get a pretty substantial amp when fighting against Uchiha. This is stated <laughs> in the 14th anniversary guide of Naruto. Don't go looking for it. The statement, I had to get it translated. The book was in Portuguese. You don't go looking for it. You won't find the statement. But the point is, point is Toriyama knows what he's doing against the Uchiha. He has a lot of new That, that racism amp, bro. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to repeat. I believe it. Bringer of Darkness is obviously one. Uh, anime, of course, because manga, he doesn't use this. But obviously, he has Yen really, so you could infer he should be able to use it. The biggest thing yeah. that holds Toby back. And literally every fucking opinion, jutsu he does is to counter Uchiha. <laughs> Yen is how readily he's going to have his Flying Rajin Kunai present. Because he is going to need to mark it, and he is going to need to throw the Kunai or have it ready while Itachi is kind of like shooting off these large scale attacks, which is going to be tough. I'll also say that, you know. Itachi's Taijutsu, I don't think is going to be like out perception blitzing Toby Rama or anything like that. I mean, it's the same guy who close quarters could manage a teleport away from Madara, at least with his like basic Taijutsu. So I'm not going to sit here and say Itachi like slashing a kunai is going to be too much. I think it's a lot of the same, honestly, like just possible Sukuyomi Genjutsu. Uh, basic Genjutsu again, Toby Ramos probably has an adept mind for it's just really like... Yeah, I, how, I don't understand how, how you guys can hate on TG. I don't understand what, what, what he's doing for Toborama. He's being so nice and so goddamn generous, bro. Like, me, I, I personally think Toborama is just not built on that level like Itachi and Minato and all of them. Like, don't get me wrong. He's Kage level. He's really strong. Very intelligent. You name it. Um, but the fact that he lost to Ken again, I think that's enough said to where he kind of is around in a sense. You know what I mean? Um, and you can say like, you know, around like V2 Ken again or whatever, things like that, or, you know, some form of relativity, even with Chikamaru, you know, Choji and even Darwi, right. And all those characters. Um, so like, you know, that's kind of what you have when it comes to Tobarama's body speed, when it comes to his flying rising, uh, Jutsu activization speed, that's where he's like getting really high in scaling. He's able to activate it against Madara. He's able to activate it um, and try to utilize it against Jubido to create some form of strategy to hit him, you know, um, and all that stuff. As for marking Jubido, I've said this a million times. It's an off-screen fight. We only have a statement that basically implies that uh, Toborama did it when um, when he had last had contact with Jubido, which is when Jubido was like charging and fighting, you name it. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly when he did it. We just don't know. There's no moment where it shows us of what he did. Like, basically, the, I'll say this, okay? It's either he got speared and then he was able to touch him off screen or he did it exactly while he was getting speared and Jubido just went at a speed that wasn't on six pass level, right? That's the only thing that makes logical sense. Or Jubido unstable is just not that strong even with the six pass transformation and meaning anybody else could be able to fucking do it. You know what I mean? Minato, you name it, et cetera, the whole night. Even Minato was able to like, to literally see everything that occurred. To see Jubido move and see Tobirama start moving accordingly as well. And he even says like, so swift. Like, okay, he's quick at striking and whatnot, you know? So overall, like, you know, if I feel like there's enough evidence to indicate people would just be able to do things similar, like what TV, TG's advocating. Or he's blatantly not on that level, okay, and he just touched him because it's unstable Jubido. He doesn't give a fuck, right? He even let Hashirama put, like, his wood around him and shit, and then he let Tobarama just throw paper bombs on him, you know? So for all we know, he could have just touched him and Jubido didn't give a fuck, you know, and we just didn't see it off screen. Or Jubido was moving along his speed along with that level of scaling for that particular moment. That's all we fucking know. And it's really hard to believe Tobarama is, is scales to six pass scaling or Jubido nonsense because literally it's contradicted and stated otherwise. Hashirama says, even if I absorb all my clones and you sage him, whatever you name it, I am still no match for him, whatever. He's stronger than me. And Tobarama, oh no, my bad, my bad. Hashirama says, brother, he's stronger than me. You know what I mean? And Tobarama's like, yeah, you're right. 
And not to be mean, but even if you absorbed all your clones, you're still no match for him. And that means even Sage mode. Like, no matter what, he's just stronger. And that's, this is unstable Jupiter, mind you. So, we know Hashirama Madara is stronger than Tobirama. If Jubido is more powerful than Tobirama, how the fuck are we going to really sit here and say Tobirama is just built like that, right? And he's just the god. And, and even, like, speed blitz six fucking times. Like... It, it's like, bro, what, what are we doing? You're going to be like, come on. Like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, so I, I just, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't stick on that. I'm not, I can't join that bandwagon. I can't even like accept it either. I think that's just, to me, I think that's buffoonery. But if you're trying to be nice and be generous and be at one of the goats, aka TG, and be humble, whatever, and give Tobarama some form of fucking you know, uh, le leniency or le whatever, you know what I mean? Just to be lenient in a way, whatever, okay? But it doesn't change anything because that means that would just apply to every other fucking character, right? Um, you know, things like that. Or, like I said, it, it, we know uh, Unstable Jupiter's power was fluctuating the whole time. That was also stated verbatim. So once again, it's very, very probable for his power to be just fucking ass when he, when he's, like, you know, when he got tagged by Tobirama or he didn't give a fuck, okay? You know, and that's it. Could we literally see Jubido also speed blitz Tobirama in Hot Drama? He just speed blitzed him. He, he went right through him, bro. <laughs> like, with his fucking black particle style shit and, and just, you know, going through. He speed blitzed Tobirama in Hot Drama. He speed blitzed Naruto and Sasuke. He even speed blitzed uh, Minato when Minato was, uh, when he was stable, though, not unstable. Um, so, like, overall, like, it's just, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't know what to tell you. Um, Tobarama's Flying Ryzen is impressive, though, because, once again, that could respond to Madara, uh, live stage on Madara. Um, it, it could also respond to Jubido to be somewhat effective in a sense where he was able to teleport behind Jubido and Naruto was able to land a Risingon. Now, to be fair, you could argue Jubido could still, still could have reacted to it or whatever because he does look when it's happening, you name it, um... And, or you could just argue that he didn't even give a fuck because no no ninjutsu works on him, only physical taijutsu in sage mode. Um, you know, you could argue that too. But the moment he got injured by a sage mode attack from Naruto, then basically he's like, all right, just in case, he then puts like fire around his back and is like protecting his his blind spot. And Tobarama just flat out says, yeah, if I use flying Ryzen, we're done. Like we cannot be careless now. Like he's he's not he's. He's not gonna be off guard again or whatever or blah blah like it's just gonna be like almost it's gonna be impossible it's gonna be too risky right so like there's plenty and plenty of uh, enough scaling to the fact that Tobarama is not built like Jubido um his flying Raijin is, su is somewhat on a level near and at least allows him to approach the vicinity of you know Jubido and to try to fuck him up but other than that that's that's all Tobarama has and the same applies for Minato and unfortunately Minato stated to even surpass Tobirama in Flying Raijin and make that technique go even further beyond of what Tobirama could do. You know, so Minato is basically the upgrade version of Tobirama. Just like Obito and Kabuto being the upgrade version of Tobirama when it comes to Edo Tensei, okay? It, it's just, this is how it is. It's what the narrative is, bro. I don't want to tell you. You're arguing with Kishimoto at that point. So, you know, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Not only that, uh, Minato outspeeds Hashirama and Tobirama several times as well. Getting to the battlefield, getting to Obito and shit, you name it. Like, Minato is just really fucking fast, dude. He even, he's, like, bro, like, Naruto with just KCM2 was able to speed blitz fucking, uh, a live Madara Susano from the back, okay? So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're no joke, and you just gotta give credit when it's due. You really do, bro, you know? Um, and, and for all the weirdos that say, oh, travel speed or whatever, blah, blah, all that, come on, bro, come on. We know damn well Toporama's combat reaction and travel speed are clearly either relative or equal upon one another. And it's just blatantly stated verbatim, even the right, for the right Kage and the Yellow Flash, that their nerve transmission, reaction, and combat, and uh, reflexes, okay, are literally on the same level. It's all in, in correlation. It's literally stated verbatim, bro. And there's feats for it. Minato saving Naruto. Minato saving Kushina from the Nine Tails. You name it. We're using body flickering and whatnot. So to sit there and say, oh, it's only travel speed? Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, so... It's not the case for Tobirama, it's not the case for Minato, and it's not the case for Raikage, even Naruto, you name it. Okay, all, it's, it applies to all speed categories, and that's what you're working with, right? And we do know Tobirama flat out admits to be inferior to Minato, and just says, your teleportation is even faster than me, okay? 
And around that time, it's not flying Raijin because literally they're all trying to get to the battlefield as fast as possible. And if it was flying Raijin, we know Tobirama and Minato would have been the first ones there immediately. They either would have just got there at the same time or Minato would have got there and then Tobirama would have been right there after, right? Because technically, if you go on the logic of Minato being better than Tobirama and Fly Raijin, he should be there first, right? Even though, based upon feats and everything, they're shown to be relative with their flying Raijin, right? So... Overall, that's just kind of what you have. That's all I'm going to say on the whole Tobarama and Itachi shit, you know, uh, along with Minato, it's important in correlation. But yeah, the whole Jibido shit, uh, you know, come on. What is, how long is it going to take for Tobarama to like whip out that kunai and mark it before Itachi shoots something off? Because that does there. determine a lot of this. There. I think Tobarama also <laughs> suffers in the close quarters range. I think you could definitely say like he might be too fast for Itachi to quite catch with this like a Matarasu or anything like that. Funny enough, Storm 4 actually just shows Tobarama teleporting away from an Amaterasu attempt. I know that's not canon, but I, I do think it's kind of funny that he does that. In some sort of Naruto that's media. Pretty cool. I know that's not fair. Like, I'm not bringing that up as a source. I just think it's interesting. I will also add, you know, he has the O's to Brahma teleporting away from an Amaterasu attempt. That's I know it's cool. not canon, but I, I do think it's kind of funny that he does that. In some sort and of... And see, that would further prove even further, like, he's not using his body speed. He's using Flying Raijin to dodge it. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. Like, Amaterasu's fast, bro. <laughs> Arto Media. I know that's not fair. Like, I'm not bringing that up as a source. I just think it's interesting. I will also add, you know, he has the obvious water style advantage, which is pretty much going to neg all of Itachi's fire style. Yeah. The biggest issue for Tobirama, too, is that in this situation, he's just not going to be able to get Tana paper bombs off. Uh, I mean, look, there's no Ido Tensei. That's what yeah. he uses for Tana paper bombs. I know some people say otherwise. I don't really go off that interpretation. That and book and series don't really support it. And again, by the time he's going to summon these Ido Tensei, Itachi can do a lot. He could seal them if he really wants to with the Tosuka yeah. Blade. I also think that if he does summon any Edo Tensei, A, you kind of have to argue they're on par with Itachi and their stats. And B, you have to also argue that Tandem Paper Bombs just blow through the Susano, which I will say, Yadamir is blocking that. Yadamir was blocking some Paper Bombs. Yeah. It was taking the form of the it Paper Bombs. It would. I don't know how people really feel about omnidirectional like Yadamir. I think it's a fair enough stance since the mirror does take shape when the Paper Bombs are thrown at it. And Zetsu, the literal will of Kaguya, does kind of call okay. Itachi invincible, which I think is pretty high praise. Now, I will add, too, that Itachi did not use the Yadamir to block Kirin. I've heard this argument a couple of times, but it just would make no sense that he would whip out the Yadamir right after like there was be no reason for kishimoto to write the yadamir getting destroyed and then have black zetsu say oh it's impervious to all attacks like it wouldn't it would have it, it wouldn't work and when itachi says without this i would have been dead he's referring to the susano itself the yadamir also Fair. forms with the fully developed susano or like beyond the base rib cage so it would take more time for that as well so i will say like he does have options for that type of attack aside from that too torama has no way to breach the susano with any of his water style like no I know rising he, on listen 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 he cuts the god tree like four different people cut the god tree. I'm not hearing that. No water style Literally. technique from Tobirama has any. Wait, here is in staff fucking. <laughs> P showings that suggest they would break through the to uh, Itachi Susano at that point. Which again, if Tobirama doesn't really have a mark about, there could be some potential there since he wouldn't have knowledge of the spirit weapons if he does, despite him knowing about the Susano. So, but again, like, right, I, even though I say this, Tobirama could just do a lot of what Minato does. Like, that, yeah. a lot of arguments for Minato kind of do apply to Tobirama, where he just, like, teleports the Susano itself out or just teleports away. He's just not going to be teleporting as much because he's not going to have a as many markings about, which is going to make it harder for him to kind of evade a lot of these attacks. Granted, though, this is a later War Art character who is compared to EMS Sasuke and is implied to be a threat to him. So I think he would be very threatening to Itachi. Like, to say otherwise would just be extremely disingenuous, in my opinion. Honestly, I don't want to skim past Tobirama, but it's a lot of the same with Minato like I just don't Tobirama has a better matchup in some ways due to the whole water style and like maybe some bringer of darkness he has some shadow clones some potential Edo Tensei so he does have options but in some other ways he is a weaker fighter than Minato like he doesn't have ceiling ninjutsu like this is something my buddy Sage's Thick Caps brought up to me but we, we were musing around with the idea that like for example Minato could seal uh Itachi's vision kind of similar to since when he, like uh, Sasuke got captured he had like a seal placed over his eyes I don't know. I gotta give him credit, but we thought That's that fair. was kind of like a cool interpretation. But yeah, it's kind of similar. Like, if you think Minato is like that much faster, like, oh, his body flicker that he used to get to the battlefield first, that translates to, you know, I know people say like the travel versus combat speed, but if you imply he does that in combat sitting consistently, paints him as faster than everybody else, he does that and just decapitates Itachi. 
Maybe a similar thing with Tobirama. You just have his stats via teleportation that much for above. I think a lot of the same for Minato and Tobirama just apply. With Itachi having that distinct advantage in the early, maybe Tobirama would probably... I think Tobirama would struggle a bit more in the later phase with Itachi too. So maybe he has less of a margin for error than uh, Minato. But I don't want to be a dead horse. I, this also does depend on Tobirama versus Minato. Like if you think Minato is faster, then there you go. Like take what I said during the Minato section. If you think Tobirama is faster, then there you go. Just take whatever I said during the Minato section and apply it a certain... Uh, another way. So yeah, that, that's, that's Tobirama. I will say though there is a chance for itachi and the minato and tobirama section of the video this is actually probably the closest section he has uh -huh. with characters because after this there's a pretty vicious power creep next up we have hokage kakashi who is just way stronger than yeah, war kakashi. it's not fair via the novel statement everyone is aware of this chakra quantities are stated to be magnitudes higher the reason this is pretty a bit more in the later phase with way stronger than war kakashi uh, we're gonna read this i've never actually read the statement i'm actually very curious um it says down and inhaled a big sigh he continuously used the mud wall for more than half a day kakashi's combat power has significantly increased um compared to when he was fighting obito and madara it's no surprise since many years have passed since then he has been diligently working although he's lost a shotting gun he can no longer use shidori he learned several new techniques to replace them, and now his amount of chakra is enough to keep up this wall and also remains strong enough to withstand cannonballs. He wiped his uh, sweat away from his temple and took a shallow breath as it was still challenging to maintain it. He is going to keep the mud wall up until they decide on a strategy. Interesting, okay? Via the novel statement, everyone is aware of this. Chakra quantities are stated to be magnitudes higher. The reason this is pretty important is because when looking at the order of magnitude, it goes up by the powers of 10. So this statement just pretty much talks about Kakashi being like tens, having having a chakra quantity tens of times greater than what he was in the work, which is more so a result of the Sharingan just not constantly draining his chakra supply, him training. So yeah, makes sense. there is a pretty bad cliffing with Hokage Kakashi. Like the reason this is such a clipping is like, for example, Tobirama versus EMS Sasuke, right? That's a debatable topic, in my opinion. War Kakashi just clips both those fighters. So there really isn't room for anything. Like, even the saying Itachi might be comparable to, like, EMS Sasuke. There isn't room for any of that because Kakashi would just clip all of that again. So this yeah. is a situation where a fighter would just be too fast for Itachi to really deal with. This also being consistent, if you think Kakashi is somewhat comparable to QB Minato. Yeah, if you, if you, like, at the end of the day, if you think he just power clips dead ass based upon the novel statement, he's blitzing and killing Itachi. Simple. I don't, you know what I mean? What do you do, bro? You know? In combat. Now, if you think he's weaker, then he loses. Now, I will say. I don't like using this line of scaling. I do think QB Minato would beat that Kakashi. But if you did want to say they are somewhat in a similar range in terms of strictly combat speed and not like teleportation or anything like that, that would just go on to extrapolate this point. That it's, Kakashi would just be too fast for Itachi and rush him down with purple lightning. The only argument for Itachi would just be Genjutsu Sukuyomi at that point. Everything else would just not be effective. Nor would he get the opportunity to really use any of that other stuff from his arsenal. Next up, we have Okage Hashirama. And I mean, this is, obvious. Th this is kind <laughs> of a wash, as we expected. You know, Hashirama. Like, the just only fight. way you could advocate for him to win against Hashirama remotely in any way possible is if you go off the Minato one shot manga with the Nine Tails, you name it, and go along that direction with, you know, his ninjutsu and all that being on par with Hashirama in power or whatever, or at least relative. And then therefore, he should have a chance, right? But take it out if you want. It's EMS Madara, who's stronger than Itachi. It's not really rocket science. He's just like long range, you know, long range wood style just wipes. I will say too, Hashirama may actually just be too strong for Itachi's level of Genjutsu to be effective. The reason I say there. this is because Sasuke's basic EMS Genjutsu is shown to be on a similar like level to Itachi Sukuyomi. It even moves at a similar speed, but even if you argue that Itachi was slowing down Sukuyomi for, Isa for Sasuke to use his basic EMS Genjutsu. The fact that they that was what he used while Itachi used Sukuyomi, I think is very telling when Itachi could have just used regular Genjutsu as well. And Hashirama would more than likely just be above that since Madara would have more than likely tried to Genjutsu him. 
many times throughout their bouts and it probably just didn't work or Hashirama just built up countermeasures to it which just makes it that he really wouldn't be able to control it I mean this is the same guy who's like throwing down with the perfect Susano like yeah. Itachi Susano's not doing anything Hashirama's gonna grab it like a football and kick it with the wooden golem there's not <laughs> really too much there Hashirama is the Sharingan killer like people talk about Toby Rama but Hashirama literally was making these dudes defect you know what I'm saying he brought them over to his yeah. side that's a different level of strong. Hashirama can make wood clones. It's just it's all this crazy stuff. Like, I feel like Hashirama versus Itachi really doesn't really need to be d discussed that, that in depth. It doesn't. You know? It doesn't. The only, the only way if you highball Itachi is the minute to one-shot manga. It's the only way. But mind you, that's base Hashirama. That's not even sage mode. So if Hashirama goes sage mode, come on, bro. You know what I mean? Like, personally, I think Minato, like, loses Hashirama, Itachi, name all of them. If Minato would KC him too, that's when you can be like, okay, maybe. Now it's debatable against Hashirama, depending on how you you know analyze all that as well. But you know that's it, right? So yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying, if it does, I, I don't know what to really tell you. Like, there's not, I, it, it, there's just not too much here. And then it's like a similar thing with Adult Naruto, which is just like this on steroids. Like he's a rival to Adult Sasuke, yeah. who has like an EMS, grows with his EMS, gets a Renegon, gets ten years of training. Not too questionable. Fire gameplay, yeah. So that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I think the real meat of the discussion is just Minato and Tobirama. I think those are the most interesting ones. Some of the minor other Kage also do pretty well, but it's a little tougher since Itachi just wins. And then with all these other Kage, Itachi just kind of loses. There's not really too much of a discussion to really be had. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Agree, disagree, why. And if it seemed like I was skimming over some sections in the video... That was more so because, like, I have solo videos on all these characters, and I just really don't want to... I'm trying not to... I'm, I'm trying to make an effort not to repeat stuff I'm saying in, like, other videos, just for my own sake and for the content to not become repetitive. So, okay. if it seemed like that, it's not because I'm forgetting. It's just more so, like, I'm skimming over that. If you want, like, more Donzo stuff, for example, Donzo has a solo video. There's plenty of videos on Toby Rama and stuff like that, so you could check that out. No, 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 it's fair. He's basically just... Uh, talking about other things now. So, well, in the video there, I, was, I already know this video is going to be as long as it is. So, my bad, guys. And I, I really didn't do that many pauses. I really didn't, bro. So, hey, give me some slack. But definitely like the video. It was really, really good. Goaded stuff. Uh, he did an incredible job. I thought he was very, very generous and nice for Toby Rama. Um, but he did a very, very good job. Um, I can't complain. You know, at the end of the day, that's just basically what you're really working with when it comes to Itachi. You know, you, you kind of you can't say it really say it any other better than that. Um, you guys, let me know what you think. You know, what I mean, let, let me know. I'm very curious. Make sure to like the reaction if you guys enjoyed. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe for more content. Subscribe to the channel. Once again, check out TG. Don't forget, give him all the love and support if you fuck with his content. And as always, guys, we play more reactions on the channel. See you guys in the next video. Bye, man. Out. Peace.